the story of Wynyard starts actually in London. It starts with a project for Brookfield um, on the heart, in the heart of London on Leadenhall Street and Gracechurch Street. And it's, it's called One Leadenhall. It's the red block there right in the heart. You can see the cheese grater. You can see the, um, the Willis building. And you can see the walkie-talkie to the right. And this, this project became, um, in a way, a forerunner for Wynyard's Place, became a forerunner for understanding Brookfield as a client and working in a very, uh, very dense city, working with heritage assets, um, working with, in this case, uh, Leadenhall Market. Leadenhall Market, very famous um, market going back to Middle Ages times, um, fantastic place to go and drink, to eat, to actually buy small products and things. It's an absolutely amazing place. And we wanted to put a 40-story tower right next to this. So it was obviously the challenges of that um, led us through a series of many years of uh, design to actually get to the right, the right, uh, or right solution. Um, and I think what actually happened was over time, we started to learn about working in dense cities, working with a historic grain and working for, uh, in terms of high towers. And this building, uh, this building site is in the St Paul's view. So there's this very constrained element in London, which is called the St Paul's Heights. From all over London, you actually have uh, views protected of the dome, and you have to be outside of those views at all times. And that's always a challenge. Uh, it creates interesting shapes. A uh, cheese grater angles itself back away from the, uh, from the, uh, the dome of St Paul's, and the, um, the scalp on the other side by, K, uh, by KPF angles the other way. And our building was actually in the shadow of this particular view. So we had to angle, angle the building back at the top. And it became an exercise in how do you design a tower that hits the ground cleanly, but actually has an historic base. The ideal for the planners was a, a solid stone base with a few windows in it and a glass tower coming out the top. And we struggled with that as architects, trying to work out how we'd actually do that, how we'd actually integrate the base and the top. And the old podium and tower um, schemes that people looked at over the years, we, we always have a problem trying to make that actually work. And we struggled from, um, through a series of processes over, over the time. It ended up this idea of these sort of linear forms that come up from the base, that feather out to become a, a sort of more glassy building towards the top. But the base um, is very much in the sort of stone tradition of London. And in terms of heights, we're at about 185 meters. We're at the same sort of height as the Gherkin. Um, uh, six to eight Bishop's Gate across the way, which is one of Chris Wilkinson's buildings, which has now gone up another 10 stories. You can see the big cluster in the middle, uh, 20 to Bishop's Gate, and now at 300 metres, uh, one undershaft. So we're in the sort of foothills now in London. The big towers are 300 metres. Um, all the sort of medium-sized towers are now about 40 stories. And was in that sort of ring or foothills around the sort of main cluster. Um, and the tower, the way it hits the ground was the real driver. And the way we integrate public space and the way we connect that the building to the city was really important. So as it hits the ground, the building actually expands on the site to fill up the entire site. And it becomes a series of uh, elements, vertical elements, that actually reflect the, the levels of um, Leadenhall Street and Gracechurch Street around the site. And you can start to see that with Leadenhall Market as well. So the, the actual Leadenhall Market, we actually move the, the tunnel of Leadenhall Market through into a colonnade around our site. I'll just go back one, and just shows that at the base there, the base is now starting to extend up the tower. So those fins you see at the base becoming uh, finer and finer fins as you go up towards the top, and then we have bigger fins on the top to sort of bring the whole composition together. And I think that, that sort of layering of bringing the public into the building, making the base work for people, making people want to go into our building um, was really important, and trying to make the whole of that base podium all retail. So you move into the building, you move up through the various layers uh, into, a, into a sort of retail area, and above that is the commercial office building above. And it was really important for us to try and make sure it connected to the city, both in architectural terms but also in real terms. And these are things that have come through into the Wynyard uh, Place scheme. So you can see the way the base opens up, uh, the corner of Gracechurch Street here, the podium line, and this integrated idea of the podium and the tower coming together as one architectural form, even though it's a podium and tower scheme. And if you look on the right-hand side of the, um, the fins, you'll see a hole. And that hole is about public space. And there's this push to put public space into buildings, preferably on the top. Um, Chris's building opposite was on the top of uh, public space on the top until we came along with a building that was actually the same height, which meant you couldn't actually see out of Chris's um, building at all. So he got another 10 stories so you can see over the top of ours. 
um, which I thought was quite amusing. Um, but the interesting, we put our, our public space at level two, and we felt the roof of Leadenhall Market was so fantastic that we wanted to sort of celebrate that in a completely new way by having this incredible view across the top of the market and actually making it uh, a really special place to go. So this is a public space, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, to allow people to enjoy a new view of London from the, from the sort of rooftops in a sort of Mary Poppins style uh, view across the top of the city of London. Um, and it became a, a really interesting place. Um, all the retail spills out onto that as a restaurant on that level as well, so people can actually really enjoy um, that level. And the office building is actually, actually above us. And so that becomes a building that integrates um, from a, a cluster point of view as well, where the building actually steps into three elements. It steps down towards the market, it steps down towards Ladenhall Street, it goes taller in the middle um, in, a sort of, in a sort of simple form, but then the way it hits the ground is really, really different to most buildings in central London. You can see it there in the middle here in the, in the cluster of central London. And I think that, that layering is the way it's fed into, into Wynyard's as well, that layering of understanding the client, understanding the way the building hits the ground and the sort of profile and the skyline is actually fed into our Wynyard scheme, which we're doing, uh, came out after this, this project. But at the same time, I think I wanted, I wanted to talk to you about uh, a project where we were doing this at the same time as both of these projects. It's in Manchester. And it's a sort of very, very difficult site in the middle of Manchester. And we tested loads of ideas in terms of public space, connectivity, uh, the way a building should actually sit on the skyline, the way buildings should work together. And I just wanted to share with you some of the thoughts we had on that scheme over the last decade. And it's a very interesting site, right in the centre of, um, of, of Manchester, right next to Albert Square, uh, in a sort of historic quarter. And what was interesting, we started off with a, a site that was just a synagogue. And we demolished the synagogue, built a new synagogue, and put a tower on top. And this tower was a very interesting building. It was a hotel at the base, then had residents above, and they were more like sort of um, suburban houses stacked one on top of the other. They were trying to get people back into the centre of Manchester. Um, rather than sort of going out to the suburbs. And the back of it is cross-braced with the staircases that sort of ripped up the back edge. But it was actually interesting. Every flat had, was one floor, um, one flat per floor. And it created these really exciting spaces, really fantastic spaces, and really just the sort of things that um, you can imagine yourself living in and really enjoying living there. But actually, what was amazing, it's right in the middle, yet it's completely in a sort of no-go zone in Manchester. Everybody walks around this site, avoiding it by one block, um, even though it links down to the conference quarter, uh, goes to St John's, but actually people just never really went there because it wasn't really very safe. And there was a synagogue on the site which we needed to replace. There's also a pub which wasn't listed, but people thought it was a great pub. And there was a police station. So what actually happened from the original scheme where we just worked on the synagogue, we actually got a much bigger site with a, a combination of the clients plus Manchester City Council came on board to try and create a whole new quarter. And this is really interesting for cities, the way you think about where you just take one site and work on another site and a site next door and actually expand the whole project to be much more of a sort of city plan or part city plan. And the balance we tried all the way through was actually trying to balance the amount of public open space with the amount of construction we need to put on the site to make it work financially. And it became a really interesting discussion about how much site we should allow at ground level, how much we should have at upper levels, and whether we did a leaden hall where we put this, the, um, some of the place up in the air, or whether we put it all on ground level. It became a debate. And over time, we worked through to a scheme that was two towers, uh, 20, 20 and 30 stories, with a, a ground floor space and an upper, upper level space which were both public. And this ground floor space was fantastic. It actually opened up to Albert Square, pushed you through, uh, created a new square called St. Michael's Square. We then went up some stairs, like a sort of almost like Spanish steps to an upper level, and that was another garden space. And the two towers were like symmetrical, uh, asymmetrical around the site, but gave it these incredible spaces. We went through many iterations. Um, and we resolved to have two towers which were like a sort of brother and sister, which are similar, um, but actually were slightly different. In terms of brief, one was offices, uh, the other one was residential. And the base, um, we actually looked at uh, hiding on the synagogue and all the other stuff that went with the hotel, um, and actually making the, 
the building, um, the building is actually read together. And the two curve forms uh, curve back from the sun to get ma maximum sun into the upper level areas. And there was gardens in the sky, gardens at various levels through the tower. Um, but the most important thing, I think, was this ground floor space and the upper level space, which with these steps that link the two, you can see the sort of dynamic um, public space that we try and create for Manchester, something they haven't got at the moment, um, something which would be really special for them, um, nothing like it anywhere else in the world. Um, and it would be fantastic. Glass roof that slid back um, and just lots of food and beverage and a sort of really new place for, for Manchester. <clears throat> and the lower level space, um, which opened up to Albert Square, uh, was much more about people sitting around, enjoying themselves, and actually being part of the city fabric. And what was very interesting is the way that actually went. Um, so over time, we developed the towers, and we decided to look at all the green aspects of it. So it's got, it's got most, of, most of the building is shaded, uh, a lot of it's solid. We put windows where they were needed. We didn't put windows where they weren't needed to try and reduce the amount of energy. And what was really exciting was the, the way this actually went into a, these two forms, um, which was sort of bronze, aluminium, and actually worked really well with the sense of the city of Manchester. Except we couldn't get the Heritage for, uh, Lobby to agree. They thought it just didn't work, and it was just a complete travesty. And in fact, they thought it was so bad that we should actually, it, it actually is worth demolishing. It was so bad, it would it mean we'd undermine the town hall so much, it'd be worth demolishing the town hall, which we thought was completely mad. So we went through a whole series of iterations, which I think in a way, pulls together the themes of the conference about people, uh, connections, and density, and actually relates it to our Winyard project. So we went through a series of stacked blocks, creating a whole public place at ground level. We built over the pub, we kept the police station facade, and made a completely new, new uh, scheme. And that was a fantastic project. Uh, core in the middle, um, great new public space, keeping the police station, keeping the pub, and just building around it in a sort of, in a really interesting way. That didn't like that either. So we went for another scheme, which is a simple block, 48 by 48, um, typical sort of size for a tower, uh, nothing too unusual about that. Uh, we built over the pub, which I thought was quite an interesting thing to do, as it wasn't listed, created this fantastic public space at ground level. Um, and the back of the police station, we made it into a sort of much more interactive base, actually worked with people um, having food and beverage spitting out into this space. And it actually got sunlight. It was a great, great scheme. And that became a really interesting building. So the base was all offices. Then there was a sort of hotel band, which is an L-shaped with a 10-story high courtyard. The top band was residential with a 10-story high courtyard on the, on the diagonal. And then there was a public, fantastic public space at the top. And the public space is open to everybody. So you've got public at the base, public on the garden levels, and public at the top. And this is, you know, probably about 48 meters, about the sort of size of most towers around the world. Uh, and that was deemed to be too fat. And so that then put us back to square one yet again. And I think it's quite interesting to sort of think about the way these projects actually evolve. Um, and so the, idea, the next idea was to go for a smaller tower and bring the, the whole of the offices down to ground and actually get rid of most of the public space at lower level. And this was always that dilemma. I thought it was a shame to do that, but that's the way the scheme was going. And we ended up with this tower at the back of the site. We still built over the pub, created a new office building, and then created a new big roof that came from the tower and sheltered um, a public space on the roof of the offices. And again, it goes back to Winyard, about high-level public space. And that scheme was fantastic. It actually pulled the cladding down. We again put shading where it was needed. The roof came up over the top of the public space, on top of the roof of the, res the retail, uh, the offices, sorry, onto the uh, police station, and created a really elegant, beautiful form. And again, with public space on the top of the tower as well, with these incredible views. And we went through many iterations of that. The top became. Should it be a flat top? Should it be a pointy top? And again, these are things that happen in cities all over the world. How do you finish a tower off? Should it be a top? Should it be a hat? How do you actually do it? And this was a, a really interesting um, ex, ex, uh, ex sort of research for the right, the right solution. And we ended up with this very simple form that went up to a sort of peak at the top. It came out over, over at the, um, the top of the, the office building and created a sort of continuous one form architecture for the whole, whole thing. 
and they didn't like that either. <laughs> so that brings us on to Wynyards. And Wynyards, um, <laughs> as I say, was done at the same time, and some of these themes come through. So again, we're right in the heart of Sydney. It's a fantastic site, and we're absolutely thrilled as architects to be here doing this. We have 16 people here, um, run by Ian, Ian, Ian Lomas and uh, Simon Lincoln are our two key people here uh, looking after the project. And it's amazing. It's right in the heart of Sydney. Wynyard Station, as you all know, is an incredible place. Everybody comes here. Everybody sort of spills out. And it's, uh, it's not a great experience once you come out off the train and come up to sort of ground level. And we um, work through a number of schemes over quite a short period by comparison to Manchester. And it's, it's about, again, a series of uh, buildings that sort of reflect the um, area around, the blocks around. So the way it hits the ground is really important, which we'll come on to in a minute. But actually, the way you read it from the cityscape and the way the top's broken down was very much about trying to work with the, the forms of Sydney and actually bring it up to a special, special building for Sydney. So the idea was also opening up the ground plane, making the people coming up from Wynyard Station actually walk through the streets, walk through the lanes, um, to activate the lanes, to make it absolutely fantastic, as Gerald is doing on, on his scheme as well to make all the food and beverage open up onto the base, to make people really enjoy uh, moving around. The way the building's put together is a series of, of blocks. And these blocks start to address the lanes, start to address the park, start to address the views to the north, the views to the south. And the building actually became this sort of series of blocks that pulled together to make into a simple overall form, but actually are quite complicated into the way they're being thought through. And I actually think really, really exciting in terms of a form for a building, which is still a simple central core building to start with, but actually gives this incredible, incredible shape to the, the overall um, thing. So as you move around, you actually get different views and different, different aspects of the project. And Wynyard Park, which is the most amazing place originally, um, isn't so great now, but actually wasn't, wasn't great originally. And I think our idea is to try and link that part right through into the building and actually make our building a sort of urban room that spills into this part, to make this whole of the ground floor of the Wynyard Place scheme actually is open to, the, open to the public, opens up in terms of views through. So Carrington Street and George, and, um, George Street open up onto the, into, the, uh, into the building. The, the level change we make, we make work within the building and you move through it and move down into the station but you have this incredible relationship between the, the urban rooms at the base of the building and the, the roads either side. And the most incredible thing we did, which I think is why we won the competition back in 2013, was to get rid of the central core. As it hit the ground, we just got rid of it. We transferred it out, and we robbed a bird, and great structural engineers coming up with this idea of how to actually do that. And that means you can look straight through the building, um, look straight into the... A ticket hall, you've got these incredible views through the building. And actually, it's not restricted by the fact the core has to be in the middle on this tower coming down to ground. And I think that's just giving that ground floor over to the public is the, is the greatest thing about the project. Also, opening up onto the park, and then also bringing the shell building in next to it as well, uh, which is part of the project, uh, and working with that fantastic clock on top and creating a new public space up in the air. So some of the themes from Manchester, public space up in the air, and um, from Leadenhall, the way the building works lower down in terms of opening up to the public, um, the way the building works in terms of a sculptural form in the way it did it on Brookfield's project in London, um, and actually creating a series of almost elements that create this, that create this project. But the greatest thing is at public spaces, and this public space at roof level with a shell uh, clock um, is fantastic. Great views out, back over the park. You can see the tower in the background there. Uh, but a great, great place. And goes back to that, that Leadenhall scheme with the, the scheme up in the project, with the, sorry, the um, people up in the air. And then at ground level, this incredible view through. This view through to, to the uh, trains below, uh, through George Street and, and Carrington Street, and creating this fantastic new public space. And I think for us, it brings together the whole theme of the, of the conference about people, creating places for people, not just big tower blocks that just hit the ground. It's about opening up the whole ground for people, for connections in terms of the tube system, the uh, subway system that works in, in Sydney across to the, the rest of Sydney, um, and in terms of the, sort of the whole way that the tower is, is sculpted for, in terms of the skyline. So for us, it's a building that actually works in its context, coming from the other work we've done around the world, 
Uh, somebody's saying time up. Although I know I'm early because Gerard finished uh, after five minutes. <laughs> uh, but this is actually my last slide, so that's absolutely perfect. Ten minutes. Thank you very much indeed.